Yo, what's up people? Okay, OCRA bio paper three, it's about time. Let's look at some high yield topics. Let's see what's going on, okay? But before we get into that, I'm giving you a juicy sneak peek, okay? So this sort of question right here, where you're given like a, an image of something, normally like a micrograph or some sort of microscope image of a tissue or whatever it may be, a cell, you are named, you are asked, sorry, to name so, some labeled points, okay? This has come up every single year. It's only two marks, but if you can sort of like get comfortable with doing this, um, the, the ones that come up in the specification, and if you've done all the past papers for paper three, you, you're gonna know what I'm saying where this comes up every single year. In some papers, it's come up more than once, and then they'll have like sub questions here that are just a carry on of what this is related to. Okay, so this is related to gas exchange systems. There's most likely, I can't remember 100%, but there's probably gonna be some gas exchange questions coming after it. Okay, so that is just, it's only like two marks, maybe four marks if they do it twice. Um, but it's come up every single year, so it'd be something I'd think would come up this year. But again, who knows? Right, required practicals or practical activities, whatever you wanna call them. The most common ones that have come up so far is practical six and practical 11. Okay, these ones have come up the most. Does that mean they're gonna come up in 2024? I have no idea, guys, I'm not gonna lie. I have no clue. You've also got the respiration one in yeast, um, re rate of respiration in yeast, that one's come up a fair amount as well. And then you've got like the dissection and the microscopy ones, they come up a fair amount as well, and that sort of feeds into this sort of, sort of uh, question. Okay, so these are the most common ones. I don't have a clue what's gonna come up in 2024. In 2023, we had practical six and 12, the respiration in yeast. Um, so I don't know what's gonna come up other than that. And you got like the aseptic and brewing. Um, so yeah, all the best with practicals. It's not easy for OCR. There's such a range of synoptic knowledge that you need to have, but it's pretty good because you don't need to memorize like exact required practicals. It's more so problem solving and applying methods and techniques and stats to different scenarios, different investigations. Okay, so all the best with practicals. Let's move on to the topics. So I've realized that I've just sort of sped run into this video, assuming that you've seen my paper one and paper two, which is probably the case. But if you're brand new to this, basically what I've done is I've looked at the high yield topics, aka the topics that have come up the most. There is favoritism towards specific topics, guys, to specific sections of the specification. They receive more marks. And if you memorize those topics perfectly, if you do all the practice past paper questions related to them, it's gonna put you in such a strong position for your paper, okay? Ho hopefully that makes sense. It makes sense in my brain, and I'm sure it'll help you out, okay? So what we've got here is the topics, right? They're also known as the modules in the textbook, I believe, I'm just gonna call them topics. And then we've got the marks here, and we've got the mark percentage, okay? This is for paper three specifically. Now, as I've said in my paper one and paper two video, but if you haven't seen it, this is super important. You have module one, which is the practical skills element, okay? Now, this is a prerequisite. You need to do this one billion percent. You need to get good at the stats, the understanding of variables, the different way to do graphs and tables, and, and, and so much that goes into it because it applies directly to these topics, okay? These topics have practical application to them, just like I sort of set up here, right? and you need to get comfortable with that. But for the sake of this analysis, what I've done is I've fed all of the topic or module one content into the respective topic that that question's content had. So if, it's a, if for example, if the question was about exchange and transport, I fed that practical application into here or that practical knowledge into here. Okay, cool. Done. So basically what I want you to take away from this is that communication, homeostasis and energy is the highest topic overall. And then it drops down to genetics evolution. And then it really just dips off Look, 16% and then it dips off from there. Okay. So down here, you're looking at like half the percentage of marks as this. Again, this is all summed together. This is aggregated across the seven years, 2017 to 2023. What's going to happen in 2024? Who knows? But this sort of gives you a good understanding of where OCR leans in their favoritism towards specific topics. So I hope that helps you out, okay? Before we get onto the subtopics, that's what we're gonna get onto now. Like the video, guys, it really helps me out. Send it to your mates if they're struggling with bio. Paper three is any day now, and we've got an absolute mad one coming up this week with four back-to-back -back exams. If you do uh, maths and chem like I did, maybe you've even got a worse situation going on. Um, I know some people in the comments said, they got a crazy week this week, so I wish you all the best. 
But yeah, it really helps the channel out and I really appreciate it. But yeah, subtopics. Now, because Paper 3 can essentially pull their question content from five topics rather than three, their spread is so much wider. Okay, they have such a larger pool of content to pick from. So it's not going to be as consistent, I would say, as paper one and two. However, there is a clear theme, a clear pattern of high yield topics. As we can see here, right at the top for topic five, we've got plant and animal responses and respiration. Okay, these are right at the top here. That is where I'd be focusing a lot of my time, guys. We can see paper frequency. Obviously, the maximum is seven. As we can see here, there's no sevens. Okay, so there's always a year missing somewhere. But we can see here that plant animal responses and respiration came up six times and five times respectively. Then you've got cloning and biotech and communicable diseases. They've come up, these have come up six times each. And the manipulating genomes is also six times. And then it sort of dips off and goes down from there with patterns of inheritance at five. Okay. So I'm not going to spend too long on this table, but hopefully you can spend a lot of your revision time towards the top with the high average marks per paper and sort of work your way down. OK, as we can see, there are certain examples where the frequency is low. Like I'm going to pick on this one right here for excretion. OK, it's got 19 total marks, which means that when it has come up, it's got an average of 9.5 marks, which is quite a lot. And we also notice the same thing with a very similar topic, um, subtopic, I should say, communication and homeostasis. These kind of go together. And we can see that when it came up, it received 11 marks. OK, so even though this guy has only come up once, I would probably be revising that myself because it, one, it goes hand in hand nicely with this topic. Um, sort of got that homeostasis element to it. And when it has come up, it's got 11 marks. Does that mean that's going to repeat itself? No, of course not. But it's sort of where I would go if I was revising and use your own brain, your own logic, guys. Like think to yourself, where are my strengths and weaknesses? And certain things slot together really well, like elements of biodiversity go really well with ecosystems. There's, there's an overlap in certain areas that you can take to your advantage so you don't have to revise things twice. All right, cool. So that is the subtopics, guys. Take a screenshot or just pause the video. I hope you found it helpful. I am going to move on to this beast of a table right here. This is the history and predictions table that I want you guys to take advantage of this year. OK, so I'm going to briefly explain the table. I tried to I did the same thing, same sort of table for AQA and I've tried to present it in the clearest way possible. I'm sure there's some improvements, but here we go. I'm going to explain it briefly and then feel free to just work through it yourself. You don't have to hear me like ramble on about different subtopics. Um, so basically, obviously, this is the subtopics right here. This is everything that can come up. And then across the top here, we have every single year. And then we have the color coded paper one, paper two and paper three. OK, nice yellow, green and like a, a peachy coral color. All right. And then that obviously repeats every single year. So we can try and look for patterns. All right. That's the main point here is for you guys to go away and think to yourself, maybe get together on a WhatsApp group or like with your mates at school and think, OK, let's brainstorm which subtopics came up because I, I haven't seen the papers for paper one and two. I have zero clue. I'm not a teacher. I don't have access to them, but maybe that's something you guys can go away and do. But like, for example, let's say you guys say respiration has barely come up at all. It's, it's super absent so far. And then you think to yourself, OK, 22 marks in 2020. 24 and nine marks in 2017. A lot of marks here and here, nothing here basically in 2019. A little bit here, a little bit here, decent amount here, decent amount here. And then you can go away and think to yourself, if something has barely come up, but it normally comes up a lot, then there's a higher chance that it's gonna come up in paper three 2023. That makes sense. So like, look at this here, where it, there was nothing in paper one or two, but then you got 14 marks in paper three. OK, so stuff like that, I want you guys to go away and work on. Obviously, you don't have to. You can just revise everything, hope for the best. Um, use this sort of table, start with the high yields and just just revise just like you normally would. But if you do have the time and you do have some mates that want to get involved or, or even like go away in the comments <laughs> and just think to yourself, this barely came up and it might come up a lot this year. So what I do is I go away. I think to myself, first and foremost, what was highly prevalent? in paper three, 2023. From there, it's probably not likely to have a back to back year of very high marks in paper three. You will see that in certain situations. 
Um, but from my perspective, they like to switch things up a little bit. So for example, last year, respiration came up a ton, but the year prior to that, it didn't come up at all, okay? And then the year before that, it came up for 10 marks. The year before that, it came up not at all. There isn't a clear pattern of this misses year every other year or something like that, but that's sort of where I would think and spend my revision in the gaps, if that makes sense. So don't, don't like rush into doing this, focus on the high yield, but once you've got the high yields down, this is where you can do sort of a thought, thought exercise and think, aha, okay, it didn't come up last year either. Let's think about this. Communicable diseases didn't come up last year. Has it come up so far in 2024? If not, that is an area where I'd be focusing some of my time. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I'm going to stop talking now, let you guys get back to revising. I wish you all the best, guys. Seriously, this week is absolutely crazy. Um, I just wish you all the best and I hope it goes well. Until next time, guys, peace.